All right, everybody, day 21 of my revolver collection shorts. And today we have another one of my Rugers, my Ruger new model Super Black Hawk. Now, this is very similar to the gun you saw yesterday, but there are some differences. One, it has a shorter barrel. This has a three and three quarter inch barrel. Two, it has an unfluted cylinder. Three, it has a Bisley grip with some nice silverwood grips from the factory. Four, it has that special hammer they put on the Bisley models. And five, it is chambered in 44 Magnum, so this is quite the little powerhouse. It is an all stainless steel, single action pistol. You load it from a side gate, as I have said previously in other videos, and you have to cock it every time you shoot it. And like I said, this one is a 44 Magnum, so this is quite a powerful gun. In fact, it's the second most powerful Ruger I have. Tomorrow, we'll see the most powerful one. All right, everybody, day 22 of my revolver collection shorts. And as I promised you in the last video, today I'm showing you my most powerful Ruger. This is my Ruger 454 Casul Super Red Hawk Alaskan. This is an incredibly powerful pistol. This is basically a snub nose version of the Super Red Hawk, which of course means it's meant for carry, which is why I carry this gun quite a lot. Some people might argue that it's not a carry gun, but I say, well, then why does it have such a small barrel? As you can see, it is all stainless steel. It holds six rounds and it is double action, single action. The changes I have made to this gun is I have put aftermarket sights on it and put a set of wooden Hogue grips on here. They are a little oversized, some people might say, but you kind of need big grips on a gun like this to hold it and handle it while shooting it. So this is my most powerful Ruger. Like I said, it is my Ruger Super Red Hawk Alaskan in 454 Casul. All right, everybody, day 23 of my revolver collection shorts. And today we have the first Smith & Wesson in my video series here. It is a Smith & Wesson 360. Now this is their lightweight scandium framed 357 Magnum five shot revolver. It is a double action, single action gun. And as you may guess, with that scandium frame, it's extremely light. It does have a stainless steel cylinder, which is unfluted, and a stainless steel barrel shroud. But overall, this gun is super light, which as you can suspect with it being a 37 Magnum, makes it quite a handful to shoot. Now these grips do help. They are nice rubber grips from Smith & Wesson. They were stock on the gun, a good three finger grip. They help you keep a hold of it, but this gun is still kind of a beast to shoot. In fact, I would say this, my Smith & Wesson 360 is my second most painful Smith & Wesson to actually fire. Tomorrow, we'll see the most painful one. All right, day 24 of my revolver collection shorts. And I said today I would show you the most painful gun to shoot in my collection. And this is it right here, the Smith & Wesson 360 PD. Now the fiber optic front sight came standard on it, but the grip is something I added. This is a Hogue rubber boot grip in kind of a Tiffany-ish blue. I really like that look on this gun. This is much like the 360 I showed you yesterday. It does have a stainless steel sleeve in the barrel, but the biggest chunk of steel, that stainless cylinder, is now titanium. That makes this gun very light and therefore a little bit painful to shoot since it does shoot full house 357 Magnum loads. It holds five rounds of 357 Magnum. And by the time you get to that fifth round, if you can still feel your hand, you're a better man than I am. You can carry this gun on you and not even know you have it. It literally feels like a cap gun when you pick it up, but it is by no means a cap gun. It is a powerful little self-defense snubby. And it is my Smith & Wesson 360 PD. And it is easily the most painful gun I have to actually shoot. All right, everybody, day 25 of my revolver collection shorts, and today we have another Smith & Wesson J-Frame, but unlike the other two you saw, which were lightweight J-Frames, this is an all-steel version, and this just isn't any all-steel version. This is the LDV. That stands for Leonardo da Vinci. It is a special production honoring the Da Vinci Code movie, and even the serial number on the gun starts with LDV. The biggest distinguishing factor of it is that unfluted cylinder there. Now, I have changed the grips out to some wooden grips, but I have left the stock black ramp sight on it because I don't carry this gun. It's just kind of a cool gun to have because, like I said, it is a collector's model. But it is an all stainless steel, five shot, 357 mag Smith & Wesson J-Fame revolver. And in this case, it is the Leonardo da Vinci model referencing the da Vinci Code movies.